Our final objective is to describe how the cerebral cortex, brainstem, hypothalamus, and spinal cord control the activity of the autonomic nervous system. At one time, it was thought that the autonomic nervous system worked all on its own, that it had autonomy. And in fact, that's where the name autonomic nervous system comes from. Autonomy means freedom from external control or influence or independence. And it was thought that the autonomic nervous system basically worked all on its own. But of course, now we know that the autonomic nervous system is influenced by the central nervous system. Think about how emotions, for example, lead to the production of tears, or how they can increase heart rate, or respiration rate, or blood pressure. These are things that are under the control of the autonomic nervous system. However, emotions come from the central nervous system. And so obviously the central nervous system influences the autonomic nervous system. So let's look at the relationship between the central nervous system and the autonomic nervous system. Input for autonomic nervous system control is received from three principal portions of the central nervous system. The cerebral cortex via the limbic system, the hypothalamus, the medulla oblongata, and, of course, the spinal cord. If we look at the integration centers for autonomic nervous system reflexes, we find that they are in the brain and the spinal cord. I've listed just a few here that you're familiar with. The production of saliva and tears are autonomic nervous system reflexes. However, those reflex centers are actually found in the brain stem. But autonomic nervous system reflexes that are below the neck, such as the micturition reflex, which is the reflex involved in urination, the defecation reflex, erection, ejaculation, those reflex centers are all found in the spinal cord. Now, even though these reflex centers are found in the spinal cord, they do receive influence and input from the brain, the brain stem, the hypothalamus, as well as the cerebral cortex. So even though the integration centers for most autonomic nervous system reflexes are found in the spinal cord, input to those reflex centers is sent from the brainstem and therefore affects those reflexes. Let's go back and look at some of the reflex centers that are found in the brainstem. Recall again, there are multiple control centers for autonomic nervous system function in the brainstem. For example, the cardiac center, which controls how fast the heart beats as well as how hard it beats is found in the brainstem. Vasomotor control, which controls the size of blood vessels and ultimately the bl uh, blood pressure is found in the brainstem. Production of saliva, swallowing or deglutition, sweating, in secretion of digestive enzymes by the gastrointestinal tract, control of micturition, as well as the size of the pupils. All of those control centers are found in the brainstem. So sensory input is sent to the brainstem and motor output is sent down from the brainstem via descending fiber tracks and cranial nerves to those integration centers for all of these reflexes. So the brainstem influences those reflexes, even though the integration center is found in the spinal cord. Now let's move farther up or superior in the brain to the diencephalon, where we have the hypothalamus. If you recall, the hypothalamus is really the master at controlling 
visceral functions. Your book goes as far to call it the boss because it essentially has descending fibers onto the brainstem that can influence all of those control centers. Also recall that the hypothalamus produces multiple hormones. So signals are actually sent from the hypothalamus to those control centers in the brainstem. And then signals are sent from the brainstem to those integration signals in, excuse me, those integration centers in the spinal cord. So even though the brainstem is directly affecting those integration centers, the hypothalamus controls the brainstem. So overall, it's the hypothalamus that's controlling those integration centers for those autonomic nervous system reflexes. The cerebral cortex can also influence autonomic nervous system reflexes. And we know this to be true because just think about uh, how thoughts can affect autonomic nervous system reflexes. You may think of something that is scary and you have an increase in heart rate or an increase in respiration rate or something makes you sad, a thought or something that you see. These things are processed by the cerebral cortex, but yet they influence your heart rate or they cause you to tear up or you smell something delicious and it causes uh, the production of saliva. So obviously there is this connection between the cerebral cortex and autonomic nervous system functions. And that connection appears to be the limbic system. So information is sent to the cerebral cortex, output is sent from the cerebral cortex to the hypothalamus via the limbic system. So thoughts and emotions that will affect the autonomic nervous system pass to the hypothalamus via the limbic system. So this is how anger can raise blood pressure or can dilate blood vessels in your skin. How fear can raise blood pressure by increasing heart rate. You smell food and you salivate. Or your heart, excuse me, your stomach and intestines start to move. Much of those emotions and thoughts originate part or in total in the cerebral cortex and they influence via the limbic system, the hypothalamus, which of course controls autonomic nervous system functions. Sexual thoughts, just thinking about sex or thinking about images, can increase blood flow to genitals and anxiety thinking about things that are, are, are negative can cause the opposite effects. This connection again between the cerebral cortex and autonomic nervous system reflexes is via the limbic system and its impact on the hypothalamus. So to summarize, the integration centers for most autonomic nervous system reflexes are found in the spinal cord. However, the control centers for many reflexes are found in the brainstem. So there is sensory input sent from the spinal cord to the brainstem and motor output sent from the brainstem via descending fiber tracts as well as some cranial nerves to those reflex centers affecting those reflexes. The hypothalamus also influences those control centers in the brainstem, which ultimately influences those reflex centers. There is also input onto the hypothalamus from the cerebral cortex via the limbic system. Okay, so just to recap, the objective of this screencast was to describe how the cerebral cortex, brainstem, hypothalamus, and spinal cord control the activity of the autonomic nervous system.